In the 21st century, when you look at these tall skyscrapers and fancy buildings, it's easy to forget that millions of years ago, this might have been the home of dinosaurs, or even just a thousand years back, it could have been a battlefield. And now we are discovering bits and pieces of that history. So in this video, we will explore the top 15 of them. So sit back with your coffee and enjoy. 1. Fossils. Imagine walking through a lush rainforest millions of years ago, surrounded by exotic plants and animals. What would you feel? This is the kind of experience that the fossils at McGrath's flat can offer us. They are like windows into a lost world where life thrived in a warm and wet climate. The fossils are so well preserved that they reveal the smallest details of the ancient organisms, such as hairs, scales, and even stomach contents. But how did these fossils form? And how did they survive the changes in the environment over time? The answer is that they were buried by volcanic ash, which quickly hardened into rock and protected them from decay and erosion. The ash also contained minerals that replaced the organic matter, creating a replica of the original shape and texture. This process is called permineralization, and it is one of the most common ways of fossilization. The fossils at McGrath's flat are not only beautiful and fascinating, but also valuable for science. They can help us understand how the rainforest ecosystem evolved, how the climate changed, and how the animals adapted to their environment. They can also tell us about the biodiversity and biogeography of Australia in the past and how it compares to the present. 2. Mysterious Metal Hand Imagine finding a mysterious metal hand in an ancient grave. That's what happened to some archaeologists in Switzerland who stumbled upon a bronze hand with a gold cuff dating back to 3,500 years ago. What could it be and who made it? These are some of the questions that puzzled the researchers who had never seen anything like it before. The bronze hand is slightly smaller than a real one and has a hole inside that could fit a stick or a pole. It was found with the bones of a middle-aged man along with a bronze dagger, a hair ornament, and some gold fragments. The hand is so old that it is the earliest metal representation of a human body part ever found in Europe. But its purpose and meaning are still unknown. One possible clue is that the man may have lost his hand during his life, and the bronze hand was a symbolic replacement. But this is just a guess, and there is no evidence to support it. The hand remains a mystery, waiting for someone to solve it. 3. Beeswax Wreck A long-lost Spanish shipwreck has been found on the Oregon coast, but how did it get there, and what was it carrying? This is the intriguing story of the Santo Cristo de Burgos, a 17th century galleon that vanished in the Pacific Ocean. The Santo Cristo de Burgos was part of the Manila-Acapulco trade route, which connected the Spanish colonies in Asia and America. The ship was loaded with valuable goods such as silk, spices, porcelain, and beeswax, which was used for candles and sealing letters. The beeswax gave the ship its nickname the Beeswax Wreck. The ship left Manila in July 1693, but encountered a powerful storm that blew it off course. The crew tried to reach the coast of California, but instead ended up near the mouth of the Columbia River in Oregon. There, the ship ran aground and broke apart, scattering its cargo and timbers along the shore. For centuries, locals and visitors have reported finding beeswax blocks, Chinese coins, and other artifacts on the beaches of Oregon. Some even claim to have seen the remains of the ship in a sea cave near Astoria. However, the identity of the wreck remained a mystery until recently, when a team of researchers from the Maritime Archaeological Society and the Beeswax Wreck Project conducted a scientific analysis of the wood samples from the cave. They discovered that the wood was Philippine Nara, a type of hardwood that was commonly used to build ships in Asia during the 17th century. This confirmed that the wreck was indeed the Santo Cristo de Burgos, the only known Manila galleon that was lost in that area. 4. Barrow Island Cave Site How did humans reach Australia so long ago, and what does this mean for our understanding of human history? This is the fascinating question that the discovery of the Barrow Island cave site raises. The Barrow Island cave site is located on a remote island off the coast of Western Australia. 
It is one of the oldest and most well-preserved archaeological sites in the country, dating back to about 65,000 years ago. The site contains evidence of human occupation, such as stone tools, shellfish remains, and charcoal from fires. It also contains bones of extinct animals, such as giant kangaroos, wombats, and marsupial lions that coexisted with the humans for at least 15,000 years. The discovery of the Barrow Island cave site challenges the conventional view that humans arrived in Australia about 47,000 years ago and that their hunting and fire use caused the extinction of many of the native animals. Instead, it suggests that humans reached Australia much earlier and that they adapted to the diverse and changing environments of the continent. It also implies that humans had a complex and long-lasting relationship with the animals and that they may have played a role in their conservation. In 5. Mbirosaurus rathi The fossil of Mbirosaurus rathi was found in a remote area of Zimbabwe, where few paleontological expeditions have been conducted. It belongs to a group of dinosaurs called sauropodomorphs, which are the ancestors of the sauropods, the largest land animals ever. Mbirosaurus rathi was a small, bipedal herbivore that lived about 230 million years ago, during the Triassic period, when dinosaurs were just starting to diversify and dominate the world. The discovery of Mbirosaurus rathi is significant for several reasons. First, it shows that dinosaurs were present in Africa earlier than previously thought, and that they may have originated there or in nearby regions. Second, it reveals that sauropodomorphs were more diverse and widespread than previously assumed, and that they had different adaptations to different environments. Third, it provides new clues about the evolution of sauropods and how they transitioned from small, two-legged forms to massive, four-legged ones. The fossil of Mbirosaurus rathi is a rare and valuable find that sheds new light on the ancient history of Africa and the world. 6. Nodosaur Imagine finding a new species of dinosaur while working in a mine. That's what happened to Sean Funk, a miner from Alabama who stumbled upon a remarkable fossil in 2011. But what kind of dinosaur was it, and how did it end up there? The dinosaur that Funk discovered was named Nodosaur, which means knobbed lizard in Latin. Nodosaurs were a group of ankylosaurs, which were armored dinosaurs with bony plates and spikes covering their bodies. Nodosaurs, however, lacked the tail club that Ankylosaurus had. Nodosaurs were herbivores that lived in the late Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, about 155 to 66 million years ago. The Nodosaur that Funk found was remarkably well-preserved, with its skin and armor still intact. It was about 18 feet long and weighed about 3,000 pounds. It is considered one of the best-preserved dinosaur fossils ever found. Scientists believe that the nodosaur died near a river and was quickly buried by mud and sediment, which prevented scavengers and bacteria from decomposing its body. Over millions of years, the nodosaur fossilized and became part of the rock layer that Funk was mining. Funk's discovery was a rare and valuable contribution to paleontology as it revealed new details about the appearance and lifestyle of nodosaurs. The nodosaur fossil is now on display at the Royal Tyrrell Museum of Paleontology in Alberta, Canada. 7. Ancient Artworks The discovery of ancient artworks at a site attacked by ISIS is a remarkable story of resilience and preservation. The artworks reveal the glory and brutality of the Assyrian Empire, which ruled over much of the ancient Near East. But who were the Assyrians, and why did they create these artworks? The Assyrians were a Semitic people who originated from the city of Asher in northern Mesopotamia or modern Iraq. They rose to prominence in the second millennium BC and became a powerful empire that expanded through conquest and diplomacy. They were known for their military prowess, administrative efficiency, and cultural achievements. They also had a reputation for cruelty and violence, as they often deported, enslaved, or massacred their enemies. The artworks that were found at the site of Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire, were part of the royal propaganda of the Assyrian kings. 
They depicted their victories and achievements in elaborate reliefs that covered the walls of their palaces. The reliefs showed scenes of battles, sieges, hunting, rituals, and tribute. They also portrayed the landscapes and peoples of the different regions under Assyrian control. The reliefs were meant to impress and intimidate the visitors and subjects of the king, as well as to glorify the king and his gods. The artworks that were discovered in 2022 were from the palace of Sennacherib, who reigned from 705 to 681 BC. He was one of the most famous and successful Assyrian kings, who expanded the empire to its greatest extent. He also rebuilt and beautified Nineveh, making it one of the largest and most splendid cities of the ancient world. His reliefs are considered to be among the finest examples of Assyrian art, as they show a high degree of realism, detail, and expression. 8. Bread and Beer Bread and beer are two of the oldest and most popular foods in human history. But when and how did they originate? A recent discovery in Jordan has shed new light on this question. The discovery was made at a site called Shubaika 1, where archaeologists found charred remains of flatbread in two stone fireplaces. The bread was made from wild cereals and tubers and dated to about 14,400 years ago. This is the oldest direct evidence of bread making ever found, and it shows that people were baking bread before they started farming. But why did they make bread? One possible answer is that bread was a convenient and nutritious food for the hunter-gatherers who lived in the region. The Natufians, as they are called, were a culture that had begun to settle in permanent or semi-permanent camps and had a diverse diet of plants and animals. Bread may have provided them with a source of carbohydrates and fiber, as well as a way to preserve and transport their food. Another possible answer is that bread was related to the production and consumption of beer. Some researchers have suggested that the Natufians were also brewing beer from fermented grains, and that bread and beer were part of a ritual or social activity. Beer may have been a way to celebrate, to share, or to cope with the changing environment and lifestyle. The discovery of ancient bread and beer in Jordan challenges the conventional view that these foods were invented after the agricultural revolution, about 10,000 years ago. It also reveals the creativity and adaptability of the Natufians who were able to exploit the resources of their environment and create new culinary traditions. 9. Biggest Freshwater Fish The world's largest freshwater fish is a giant stingray that was discovered in Cambodia in 2022. But what makes this fish so special and how did it get so big? The giant stingray, also known as the whip ray, belongs to a group of rays that live in rivers and lakes around the world. They have flat, disc-shaped bodies with long, whip-like tails that have venomous spines, and they feed on fish, crustaceans, and mollusks that they find on the river bottom, using their electrosensory organs to detect their prey. The giant stingray that was found in the Mekong River was a female that measured 13 feet from snout to tail, and weighed 661 pounds. This is the largest freshwater fish ever recorded by Guinness World Records, and it ties with the Mekong giant catfish as the world's largest freshwater fish species. The ray was caught by a fisherman named Mool Thun, who alerted the research team led by Zeb Hogan, a fish biologist and a National Geographic explorer. The team measured and photographed the ray and then released it back into the river. How did the ray grow so large? One possible explanation is that the ray was very old, as some rays can live for more than 50 years. Another possible explanation is that the ray benefited from the rich and diverse ecosystem of the Mekong River, which supports more than 1,000 species of fish and provides food and habitat for millions of people. However, the Mekong River is also threatened by dams, pollution, overfishing, and climate change, which could endanger the survival of the giant stingray and other freshwater giants. 10. Trojan City The ancient lost Trojan city of Tania was one of the most remarkable discoveries of 2018. It revealed a fascinating story of survival and prosperity in the aftermath of a legendary war. But where exactly was Tania located, and how did it remain hidden for so long? 
Tania was located in the southern region of Peloponnese, in what is now Greece, not Turkey. It was about 15 kilometers southeast of Corinth and 20 kilometers northeast of Mycenae, two of the most important cities of ancient Greece. Tania was founded by the Trojans, who were captured by the Greeks after the Trojan War, which lasted for 10 years and ended with the fall of Troy. According to myth, Agamemnon, the leader of the Greek army, allowed the Trojans to build their own city, which they named after their homeland, Tenedos. Tania prospered as a city-state, independent from Corinth, and developed its own culture and identity. It had a temple of Apollo, the patron god of the Trojans, and a theater that hosted plays and festivals. It also had a thriving economy, based on trade and agriculture. It minted its own coins, which have been found in various places around the Mediterranean. It also produced fine pottery and gaming dice, which show the artistic and recreational aspects of its society. Tania survived until the end of the Roman Empire, but gradually declined and disappeared from history. Its exact location was unknown until 1984, when a local farmer found a sarcophagus with a skeleton and offerings. This led to the archaeological exploration of the area, which uncovered more tombs, houses, walls, and artifacts. 11. Attractus Michael Sabini a new snake species, Attractus Michael Sabini, was discovered in Ecuador in 2021. It is one of the three ground snakes that were found in a graveyard and a nearby church. But what makes this snake unique, and how did it get its name? Attractus Michael Sabini is a colorful snake that has a brownish-red body with black spots and a bright yellow belly. It is about 30 centimeters or 12 in long and has a thick, cylindrical shape. It belongs to the genus Attractus, which includes more than 140 species of snakes that live mostly underground and are rarely seen. Attractus Michael Sabini is distinguished from other Attractus species by its large size, its chubby appearance, and its small eyes. The snake was named after Michael Sabin, a young naturalist and conservationist who is the grandson of Andrew Sabin, a philanthropist and supporter of biodiversity research. Michael Sabin has a passion for reptiles and amphibians and has visited Ecuador several times to learn about its wildlife. The researchers who discovered the snake wanted to honor him and his family for their efforts to protect the environment. The discovery of Attractus, Michael Sabini, and the other two ground snakes, A. Discovery and A's Gap, is a result of the collaboration between local people and scientists. The researchers were alerted by a woman who had seen the snakes in the graveyard, and they also received help from a school teacher who had collected some specimens. 12. Stone Circles Stone circles are mysterious monuments that have fascinated people for centuries. They are found in different parts of the world, but what do they mean, and who built them? A recent discovery in Kazakhstan has added a new chapter to this puzzle. The discovery was made near the town of Akto, where an amateur archaeologist found a silver saddle in 2010. He contacted a team of experts who excavated the site and uncovered a stone circle with carvings of animals, plants, and geometric shapes. The circle is about 60 meters in diameter and consists of 101 stones. The carvings are similar to those found in other ancient sites in Central Asia, such as the Tamgali petroglyphs. Who built the stone circle and why? One possible answer is that it was built by the Huns, a nomadic people who invaded Europe and Asia in the 4th and 5th centuries AD. The Huns were known for their horsemanship and warfare, and the silver saddle may have belonged to one of their leaders. The stone circle may have been a ritual or ceremonial site where the Huns worshipped their gods or ancestors. The carvings may have represented their beliefs, myths, or history. 13. Ninja Oath A 300-year-old ninja oath is a rare and fascinating document that reveals the loyalty and secrecy of the ancient spies and warriors. What else do the documents tell us about the ninja culture and history? The documents are part of a collection of 130 papers that were donated by the Kizu family, a clan of ninjas from the town of Iga near Kyoto. 
The documents date back to the 16th and 17th centuries, when the ninjas were active in Japan. The documents include manuals, letters, contracts, and poems that describe the skills, techniques, and philosophy of the ninjas. They also show the diversity and complexity of the ninja society, which included men and women, farmers and samurai, and different schools and factions. One of the most intriguing documents is the oath signed by Inosuke Kizu, who was a student of the famous ninja master Hattori Hanzo. The oath expresses his gratitude and devotion to his teacher and his vow to never reveal the secrets of ninjutsu, the art of the ninja. The oath also warns of the divine punishment that would befall him and his descendants if he broke his promise. The oath is written in cursive calligraphy, which makes it hard to read and decipher. The oath is the first of its kind to be found, and it shows how serious the ninjas were about protecting their knowledge and identity. 14. Human Gut The human gut is home to a diverse and complex community of bacteria known as the microbiome that affects many aspects of our health and well-being. But how can we study and manipulate this community to improve our health? A recent breakthrough by Stanford University researchers may offer a solution. The researchers created the first synthetic human microbiome, a collection of 119 bacterial species that were grown and mixed in the lab. They then transplanted this synthetic microbiome into mice that had no native bacteria in their guts. The synthetic microbiome was stable and functional and even protected the mice from infections by harmful pathogens. But what is the purpose of creating a synthetic microbiome? One possible answer is that it allows scientists to better understand the roles and interactions of different bacterial species in the gut. By adding or removing specific species, they can test their effects on the host's health, metabolism, immunity, and behavior. They can also compare the synthetic microbiome with natural microbiomes from different individuals or populations and identify the key factors that shape the diversity and function of the gut bacteria. Another possible answer is that the synthetic microbiome could lead to new therapies for diseases that are linked to the gut microbiome, such as inflammatory bowel disease, obesity, diabetes, and autism. By designing and engineering synthetic microbiomes that have beneficial properties, such as anti-inflammatory, anti-obesity, or anti-diabetic effects, scientists could potentially treat these diseases by transplanting the synthetic microbiomes into patients. Alternatively, they could use the synthetic microbiomes as models to screen for drugs or probiotics that target the gut bacteria. 15. Pink Diamond Imagine uncovering a treasure that outshines years of history. What could it mean for the world of precious gems? The Lulo Rose, a massive pink diamond, has sparked excitement and wonder. Found in the mines of Angola by the Australian company Lucapa Diamond Company, this 170-carat stone is not just another gem. It's a whisper from the past, a dazzling find that might be the largest pink diamond unearthed in three centuries. Pink diamonds are among the rarest and most sought-after jewels on the planet. Their scarcity makes them incredibly valuable, often fetching prices that soar into the millions at auctions. Take, for instance, the Williamson Pink Star, an 11.15 carat diamond that sold for nearly $60 million. Or the Pink Star Diamond, a 59.60 carat marvel that set a record with its $71 million sale. These stones are more than just accessories. They are legacies, symbols of luxury and timelessness. And that's it for today. But which one of these discoveries are the most intriguing and shocking ones for you? Let us know your opinion in the comments section below. 